Hey there everybody and welcome to the Pike Homestead. Uh, thanks for following along on our journey here. No, I haven't been videoing much myself recently. It's uh, been mostly Caroline kind of leading the charge. This has been um, one of our, our neighboring farms here, guys who live right in the neighborhood. They uh, they farm cattle and uh, you know there's there's a shortage of feed here in the area and so you know like there's there's been a hay shortage in Alberta this year after uh, after the dry year <clears throat> anyway they you know we had all this really super long grass as, as I'm sure you've seen in some of our walkthroughs and uh, so they came to us and said hey we've got it's something about uh, 50 cows and and their calves and a couple of bulls who need a place to eat you can see a few of them there behind me can we you know access your fields and rent your fields uh, which is a fairly common practice around here for people who have open fields you know it's fairly common all around for free-range cattle they just pay a rent per head per day type of thing to uh, to graze the fields and so we said yes um, now, for those who those who know us personally and stuff, they know we uh, we eat plant based. Um, you know, and I say plant based with a reason because there's a lot of negative connotation behind vegan, as far as just how militant some vegans can be about how you should eat and enforcing it on other people. And that's that's not what we're about. Hi everyone, Caroline here, and I'm just going to break this down for you, okay? So if you are vegan, you abstain from all animal products, that's your meat, dairy, eggs, fish, and animal byproducts, such as your leather and down, that's what goes in your jackets and your pillows, and you're going to avoid those as much as possible. If you are plant-based, you follow the same guidelines as veganism, however you may include animals in some form. For example, someone that eats fish once a month would be plant-based and not vegan. Also, if you like to keep buying leather gloves, you wouldn't be vegan, you'd be plant-based. We here at the Pike Homestead are plant-based. We do not eat any animal products and avoid animal byproducts as much as possible for what we need. And we do advocate for growing and raising our own food and supporting your local farmer. You want to be avoiding those factory and factory-like animal raising sources and look more locally and ethically sourced. Um, this is a choice we made for ourselves uh, and that we made, you know, in mind for not just, you know, the, the environmental and sustainability uh, options, but also health and stuff like that. Like, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of correlation, not causation, but correlation between things like colon cancer and people who eat red meat. Um, and cancer has been in my family. Uh, you know, my my father had colon cancer and and was treated for that. So, you know, it's it's something that I know is there and that we're very aware of. And so, anything I can do, like I'm I'm already a type one diabetic, so I want to take proper care of myself. Um, so you know, there there are certain individuals who called us out for selling out. You know, um, for you know, oh, so much for your morals and blah blah blah. Um, but there's something very different about cattle like this and the you know the the real like feedlot type of you know um, battery barned type of uh, grain fed cattle. Um, cows should be with their babies and free to roam and graze. We've been watching the cows on our farm and you can see that they are very maternal. They care for each other and work together as a community and that's the way it should always be for cattle. If you eat meat, uh, it's perfectly viable for some people. Vegan isn't an option. Um, you know, there there are reasons, you know, whatever against for and against it. Uh, dietary requirements above and beyond. There's always an exception. There's always thing. Not this sort of thing won't work for everybody. We made it work for us. Um, you know, and it's worked well for us. Uh, and we're learning more and more about it. And we want to be doing our homestead where we're not needing to rely on animals just you know not not to convince other people to do it, but to show that you can um, you know like you're, we're not going to convince people to do the same thing and, and I, I really don't care to right like it's it's not my job to make you eat whatever uh, it is that is entirely up to each individual uh, to make up their own mind and for us it's healthier to eat a plant-based diet um, it's not always the most sustainable either like there's it's you know every every choice you make there's going to be hypocritical elements to it 
you know, uh, I believe that electric cars are the way to go, right? But all the plastics and everything like that come from the oil industry, right? Like you can't buy even, you know, the, the greenest running car you can get, it still has a heavy impact with fossil, fossil fuels being used to create it. And that's, you know, that is, that is how the world is right now. Um, but you can make small changes one thing at a time. Um, and one of the things you can do, especially with the cattle industry, it, you foster the right type of cattle raising, and that's that's this, right? Cows out eating grass, dropping manure, making better soil. Because um, the whole part of our sustainability, and the whole way I believe um, to save the planet, is right under our feet. It is the soil we stand on. That is what is paramount. Um, and that is what the problem is with the big, you know, grain-fed beef operations that you see. And the ancillary op operations that support it. Those, you know, acres upon acres of corn, soy, and oats that are grown just to feed the cattle. Uh, the monocropping, the tilling causing soil erosion, and chemical fertilizer that washes out into the Gulf of Mexico and causes an algae bloom that kills all the fish. Those are the things that need to change. And to change, you support cattle farmers who are doing things like this. If you do choose to eat meat, source it from a local farm, where the farmer is happy to introduce you to the cows. It may cost more money, but this will also limit the animals and portion size on your plate, and the planet will become better because of it. A, a version of farming of cattle farming that has a positive impact on the environment vis-a-vis -vis the soil they make because it is the soil that is going to grow the plants that pull those you know harmful gases out of the atmosphere that return you know the the nitrogen and carbon into the soil to grow more things that you can eat and grow from um, and so you know having these cows here fertilizing our soil, doing additive regenerative farming techniques is the way forward. Um, and it's the way forward in a way that, you know, with permaculture and everything is showing, while it starts small, um, you know, like your growth year over year in the first few years, right, is, uh, is smaller. But as you get to year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10, it starts to multiply and get bigger and bigger and your yields get bigger and bigger and everything gets better and better because rather than stripping your soil and the life-giving stuff in it away, you're building it up. And, you know, if you're doing it right, <clears throat> you get the nice black, lively growing soil full of life that grows your plants. Um, and part of the way to do that, and one of the reasons we'll have animals on our farm, not because we're going to eat them, but because they're going to help us make more soil right and make healthy green soil that isn't having all this chemical runoff getting into the water tables and going out to the ocean and killing all the fish right um so there is like there's a documentary about this i believe it was called soil i'll have to look it up and we'll get it linked in uh down below that really goes into this like the <clears throat> the root um savior of our planet will be good soil and the industrial level you know tilling and farming and breaking up of soil that washes away in the water uh, using chemical fertilizers where the plants only use a portion of it and the rest gets run out into the runoff and again causes these algae blooms that you know they've seen take up all the light and oxygen in the water leaving nothing for the fish and the fish die um there you know that's, that's been happening in the gulf of mexico over the last few years uh it's been yeah yeah again like i, I just quoting from documentaries i've watched about it but uh it's it's definitely like that's it's one of the reasons why we're doing what we're doing it's why we have the chickens so chickens help in the garden by eating bugs scratching at the soil and attribute to creating compost rich soil we house layers and roosters we don't care if our hens lay or not and will not increase lay exposure to keep eggs coming they're free to lay when they want and have a break over winter excess eggs not fed to the chickens will be sold as available in our farm shop in the future you have to make what works for you work. Um, and the best way for us to go forward, like our chickens, 
at least the four older hens we had before we added in all the new ones who haven't started laying yet they're they're still laying eggs you know they're they're about one every other day right now so we're getting two eggs per day right now uh we were getting four a day throughout the summer when it was brighter <clears throat> but we're not eating those eggs right uh like well, what we've been doing with them so far is we just cook them up like you cook them up and give them back to the chickens because they can use the nutrients to grow healthier and fatter and get ready for winter because it's going to be cold here and uh <clears throat> and grow more eggs but when the time comes when the rest of the girls there start laying part of how we're going to you know make ourselves you know able to do what we're doing is we're going to be selling our eggs you know local farm fresh you know free run chickens who are allowed you know like they're in a fence but they go wherever the hell they want they're not overcrowded they're fed good food um you know they're living their happiest healthiest best chicken lives and their primary purpose here is to break up all the soil and stuff that uh, or break up all the the dirt and straw and help break that down to make more soil like that's our whole point <clears throat> right so one of my projects for the summer well for next year is going to be to build a mobile coop for them <clears throat> so that when we have cattle like we're probably going to keep uh working with our neighbors here because they need a place to put their bulls through the winter so i just got to get the water pumps working from uh <clears throat> for the waterers um and once that's done then they're they want to keep their bulls here <clears throat> well then i want to get chickens out there because what happens with all that manure right <clears throat> the cows drop it the flies come to it they lay some eggs have their larvae crawl around in it <clears throat> and that's when you get you know you get your chickens going around kicking it up, eating all those larvae, spreading it around, because that manure is fertilizer. And you'll get healthier grass. Every Everywhere there's a cow pie, we're going to have greener grass next year. And our fields are full of them right now. <clears throat> so we want to get our chickens out there, pecking and scratching and spreading, right? That's what we use the animals for. That's why we got the goats, right? Tally. Duke, Daisy, make your friends with the renters. Hello to you too. You having fun, Duke? Hey, buddy. There you go. Daisy. So why are you guys all packed in here? Well, we haven't eaten all the grass here yet. Okay. Oh, happy, happy Duke. How are we doing, cows? No. Oh, I see. You're looking at all the, all the stuff in here and going, why are the goats aren't eating it? We want to, right? You always go where the food is. Yeah. Little big daddy bull back there. That was a big man. There are four animals for land harmony. You have your cows and your bison. They are your key ruminant actors. They're responsible for aerating your topsoil with their hooves while infusing their fertilizer into the land. Without them, grasslands couldn't grow as robustly and regenerative agriculture wouldn't exist. Goats and sheep, while also ruminants, are like nature's weed eaters. They gobble up every weed and piece of brush they come across. They're vital to sustaining healthy pastures and reclaiming areas that have been overtaken by woody and invasive vegetation. Your chickens and turkeys are eating insects and scavenging through the droppings of the other animals. This helps debug pastures and orchards and spreads manure around while killing off dangerous parasites. Pigs are also helpful by rooting and digging up the roots with their snouts. This tills the soil and helps clear the land. Collectively, these animals form a pasture maintenance crew that no machine or chemical can match. Hey, we want to, hey, it's fun to have, you know, have all the animals and take good care of them and give, you know, ethical care and, well, you know, we're learning as we go and we're going to make mistakes, but we're trying to take care of them and we're trying to give them a good life and you know not you know we're not going to use them for food um <clears throat> but we also have to be able to support ourselves to be able to do this so things that they give us that they're not using like their eggs will get sold right otherwise we're just feeding them back to them 
So now we've had the cows here for uh, coming up on two and a half weeks. And they have done an amazing job in getting the grass down. We can actually see what's going on with the land. It's fantastic, you know? And I'm not wasting gasoline on, on the mower trying to get over fields that are not meant for a mower. Um, getting over that, so that's that's great. And, uh, you know, and it's also giving us some connections to the community here. And, uh, you know, like we're really liking you know, getting to know some other farmers because I've learned so much just about fences from these people because, you know, the fences here, they've been kind of neglected for a few years and they're not necessarily all cattle proof. So what do you do to fix that? And, and, uh, and so I've been doing that, how to get them out into, you know, get more of the fields that we hadn't had them on. Like it's been a great learning experience as well as just dealing with cattle up close and personal. Like I was a city boy, I don't know what I'm doing with all this, but uh, yeah, they're, they're actually a really great herd. They've all got themselves, actually, <laughs> they've put themselves all in the, uh, all in the cattle runs here, in the, uh, <clears throat> all in the fences, even though it's all open and they can go wandering wherever they want. Here, let's, uh, just, Hank and Rocket, how are you doing, Rocket? Being a happy barn cat? And then, got everybody here, all angry at the noise I'm making. Hello ladies, how are we doing? So they're free to run pretty much through all of our fields. So they've all put themselves in here, they follow where the food is, right? <coughs> There's a difference between um, being sustainable and environmentally friendly and um you know being being a hardcore vegan which we're not um <clears throat> and as far as i'm concerned like this sort of cattle operation is the type that you need to be supporting the you know i mean their their herd is about 500 all told uh we've got you know 50 or so of them here <clears throat> but uh you know so it's fairly large and they're spread out around all the fields around us too but, you know, they, this is the type of operation. They're, they're not just eating the grass. They're building the soil in a sustainable way. And it's the soil that's gonna save the planet because all of the best solutions for uh, greenhouse gas emissions and everything like that is plants. And you can't plant plants without good soil. Um, <clears throat> And so if every, like if, you know, there's not enough land on the planet to have the meat going at the capacity that people are buying and using it. Um, you know, like there's, there's not enough land mass on the planet to support that, this sort of thing for everybody. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a more ethical standard, I think. The cows aren't mistreated. They are left to, you know, roam and live their best lives and do something good for the ground that they're eating, right? This is, this is the cycle of the prairies. This is what was here before people. Uh, this is what the buffalo used to do, right? They'd go through, they'd eat the grass, they'd poop, more plants would grow up next year. And you'd have this huge root system going in the soil that sustains all that life. And, uh, and that's what we wanna have here on the farm. You know, um, I don't think we're going to be able to be no-till right away, but we'll get there. Um, but we are going to have to till up the soil at the start. But we're going to try to do it in minimal amount and build up our soil in a clean, ethical, and safe way. And you know, it's uh, Hank versus Kitten. Hank! Leave her alone. Okay, little one. Hey, buddy. They all like to play the same way you do. Anyway, um, so yeah, like that's that's our goal, right? We're not selling out. We're supporting and being supported by um, an ethical way to do the industry, right? Like, 
here. We're not gonna change the world by uh, by making forcing everybody to go vegan. That's that's just not gonna happen. Um, but we can all make small changes by doing the uh, the ethical kind of farming, right? Doing the not profit driven, not you know mechanized, uh, overly mechanized, I guess, right? Um, if everybody was homesteading, it would be great, but not everybody can do that. Uh, we're not even sure we can yet, but we're getting there. Um, anyway, so yeah, we're, uh, we haven't broken our values or our morals by supporting an ethical meat industry standard here. And, uh. You know, just because we're not going to partake on it doesn't mean that we can't help make sure that they're, you know, raised in an ethical, clean, environmentally friendly way, or as environmentally friendly as possible way, right? Um, and it's just those little steps forward that, that are going to make the difference in the long run. All right. Anyway, uh, hopefully this makes sense to you. Hopefully you like it. Um, and so, yeah, feel free to uh, let us know in the comments what you think. And, uh, you know, like and subscribe. Follow us for more.